where well, we're going to be trying to evaluate the factors that need to be considered when we are designing a chemical synthesis process. And there are a number of different factors that we need to consider. And we're going to kind of overview them very quickly in this video um, and also focus um, specifically on the availability of reagents. So <clears throat> this to me is an absolute special candidate for a nine mark question. Now, um, I think the only question is when it's going to be tested. Um, it would make sense if it was tested this year, but it may not be. So, um, so we will see what happens with that. Either way, I think it's really important to understand how you are going to evaluate a chemical synthesis process to include all of these factors. And what we'll be doing over the next a uh, couple of videos, which are the final ones in the HSC chemistry course, is to just give you a bit of a focus on exactly what are the sort of factors that you need to consider. And I'm going to contextualize some of those in uh, the context of a few different industrial chemistry processes, some of which you may be familiar with already and some which you won't. <clears throat> I think the important thing here is for you to um, work on your case study. We constructed this through a learning menu uh, which allowed you to have some choice over what you were doing but also to, to target specifically the information that you needed. So that allowed you to target exactly the specific factors that you were looking at and set them in the context of your particular case study of an industrial process. Because no industrial process is actually specifically named, I cannot imagine that you would have to know any of these off by heart. But what you should be able to do is, if given a certain amount of information, be able to analyze it, be able to identify some of the key factors, and to be able to set it in a context that allows you to evaluate the chemical synthesis process. So, of course, the most important thing that we're looking at is that we're talking about synthesis and this is the production of a substance. And usually what we're doing is looking at the production of a substance with some sort of industrial implications. That means large scale. Now one thing that's interesting is to try and draw the distinction between a synthesis process and an industrial scale process. There's certainly been a few examples where the particular development of a process does not necessarily um, then carry on to the large scale production of that particular chemical. And probably one of the best examples of that that we've looked at is the Haber process. Nevertheless, what you want to do is pick something, and of course this doesn't have to be something new, this could be something, for example, um, like an ester. So we've looked at the process of esterification. So could I think through the production of an ester, and particularly if I was to produce an ester on a large scale, and go through all of these different factors in order to analyse that. Well, the availability of reagents, hopefully I remember that my ester is the um, synthesis of an alcohol and a carboxylic acid. So therefore, I would need to source uh, both of those. Where would I get my alcohol? Well, that could be from a fermentation reaction, particularly if I'm looking at ethanol. Um, it could also be from the hydration of ethene. Uh, and I also need a carboxylic acid. So um, I can do that through an oxidation reaction of a... Uh, primary alcohol and that will give me a an ester and then I can use uh, those two reagents in order to uh, react them to produce my ester. The reaction conditions of course are going to be a little bit different. I may decide that I want to heat this reaction. I know it's an equilibrium so I want to speed up the rate of the reaction. I may also want to use a catalyst like con concentrated uh, sulfuric acid. That would be quite useful as part of my reaction conditions. My yield and purity is going to depend on my uh, moles and often the mole ratio. Um, um, it's also going to depend on my methods of separation. If I have a mixture of organic substances, I'm going to need to separate the ester from the other components. It's likely in an equilibrium that I'm not going to go to completion and therefore I'm not going to just have my products. I may have a mixture, a final mixture, which contains reactants and products, and therefore I'm going to need to separate them. Industrially, 
Esters will probably fit into uh, perfumes, so cosmetics is probably the most likely place that you'll find the esters. Not the only place, of course, but we want to try and think about where our product fits in with these industrial, which is large scale use. Of course, the food industry is another area where we might find the production of esters. Environmental issues are going to be interesting in terms of any vapors, so any of the um, gaseous molecules that actually, uh, through the heating process, vaporize and are released into the atmosphere. So I need to think about those. I also need to think about the fact that there is some volatility, there is some flammability that is part of um, the components of this particular process, and I need to make sure that I'm keeping uh, aware of those. The social issues may uh, be simple as uh, personal safety, but they could also include things like um, uh, labor force. So where are we going to source the labor that we need to run an industrial plant? So that can actually affect things like even just the location of the plant. And economic issues are going to link specifically to yield. They're going to look at costs and they're going to look at profits. In the same sort of way, you would expect economic issues always to be the case that I'd like to spend less than I make, and so therefore I can uh, produce a profit, and the larger that profit is, the more successful my business is going to be.